And before you come to me, J-Lo is a white Hispanic. Okay, so let's not, let's not do that. She is a white Hispanic. There are white Hispanics. There are black Hispanics. She is a white Hispanic. Everybody white sit tight. Everybody white sit tight. Especially during black women's Black History Month. Okay? These diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh-huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, ooh, BBS. I just turn the water on. Big ol' flex. Shit you never saw before. Uh, these niggas chasing me like waterfalls. Before I continue with this video, I just wanna give a shout out to Parade, this video sponsor. So, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Parade, Parade is very much a Gen Z type of underwear company that just encourages you to express yourself in different ways through your underwear. Now I saw they had a Bessie Johnson collection and I was like, baby, please inject that into my veins. See, you can never go wrong with a Bessie Johnson Teddy. Oof. Never go wrong with a Bessie Johnson Teddy. Now all of the bottoms were sold out, but I'm definitely waiting around for when the bottoms do return, but I was able to go ahead and get this bra as well. Cute. This is definitely a cute collab between Parade and Betsy Johnson. This is a set that I found on Parade as well. See, I love a good old like everyday bra and panty set. Something that's comfortable, you know what I mean? Like something that's not too much and something that's gonna be seamless under my clothing. So Parade, y'all did that with this one too. Now shout out to Parade for giving me my own code WOO40 so that all of you guys can get 40% off of your Parade purchase, okay? 40% off. Make sure that you use Woo 40 to get 40% off of your entire order. Now, it doesn't apply to the Bessie Johnson collection. The Bessie Johnson collection on Parade is already very reasonably priced. However, the 40% off code works on the entire website, unless it's already a sale item. A shout out to Parade. What's up, guys? It's your sister. Welcome back to my Chanel. If you're new here, make sure that you like, share, subscribe so you can join the Black Women's Tribe. Yeah, come join the tribe. Hello. <laughs> During Black Women's, it might be April Fool's Month, but Black Women ain't your fool's month. Okay, Black Women's Month. Um, Before we get into this video of just a couple things, child, um, listen, I'm taking two trips. Okay, I'm taking two trips. If you want to join me in Cartagena, Colombia in June, please go to Wukation.net. Wukation.net for Cartagena, Colombia. All the information is going to be on Wukation.net. Make sure you go on the site, get all the information, sign up. Once we in there, we in there, there will be nothing I could do for you last minute. Okay, nothing I could do for you last minute, point blank period. Okay, so Cartagena, Colombia. Is in June. September, I'm going back to Ghana, okay? In order to join me for Ghana, please go to sortedchalet.com. Sortedchalet.com. The spots are very limited, okay? I, I actually think, I actually think it's almost sold out. I, I'm not sure, but I know we don't have a lot of spaces left. So, sortedchalet. Cartagena, vocation.net. Ghana, sorted challenge. Don't confuse the two. All right? Okay. How y'all doing in April? How y'all doing? How's April treating y'all? Is April treating y'all good, child? This is a month, baby. Um, I wanted to dedicate this video of just a couple things to unlikable women. And I'm not saying that I don't like them, but it's clear that the internet doesn't like these women that we're about to discuss in this video. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into just a couple of things. Just a couple of things. Just a couple of things. things. Now we got a jingle. <laughs> During Black Women's Black Mama Die Month. Um, okay, so J-Lo. TikTok has been cooking J-Lo's ass. All month long, all month, all month, all month long, all month, all month. Like for for Black Women's Black Women's History Month, the way y'all cook this lady, <laughs> the way y'all fry her ass all month. What did J Lo do to y'all? 
What did J Lo do to y'all people? Damn. Like I mean, I'm not the biggest J Lo fan, but God, but this, but woo. Y'all are giving her a lot, okay? Let me tell you when I knew things were shifting in the atmosphere for J-Lo this year. Remember back in February for SNL, J-Lo co-hosted uh, SNL with um, Ayo Edibiri. And remember, there was this uh, audio that um, surfaced of Ayo from an old podcast where, you know, she was basically just talking about Jennifer Lopez and how, you know, dang, like, you know, Jennifer Lopez, like, what is her talent? She can't sing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and she wasn't saying anything that we wasn't saying. Today, I was actually thinking about one of my favorite scams of all time, um, because J-Lo is hosting or is uh, performing at the Super Bowl halftime show. Yes, she is, which is a scam in itself. And her whole career is one long scam. Oh, the longest con. J-Lo can't sing. And did you know that J-Lo doesn't know that she can't sing? Well, that's the thing that is... (laughs) She did an interview, and then she was like, I never knew that people didn't think I could sing. I thought I could sing. Like, she thought that she was on... She thinks she's on multiple tracks, but it's not her. I think she, like, or she thinks that she's still good, even though, like, she's not singing for most of these songs. Like, a lo- and I was reading up because I was just, I just, I was fascinated. I became fascinated for myself. And a lot of the, like, uh, like write-ups of the song will be like J-Lo didn't have time to make it to the studio like J-Lo was busy it's like doing what not singing obviously (laughs) you know she was just saying what the population has been saying for the last 30 years like J-Lo cannot sing she has all these big records but we know she can't sing we know Ashanti be clocking in for her we know Christina I think Christina Milian has also uh, done background vocals for her there have been countless women who we will never ever even know who they are and they were the vocals for J-Lo under her main vocals. And so, you know, they were just, she was just joking about that. And I guess like when the audio surfaced, J-Lo felt the need to share with us that basically she made Ayo apologize to her before they hosted their SNL uh, show together. Um, she talked to, I believe it was Variety. This is a Variety uh, article, but J- Jennifer Lopez revealed in a new Variety cover story that the Bear Emmy winner Ayo Idebiri apologized to her before they filmed their Saturday Night Live episode um, in February. Idebiri hosted the episode with Lopez serving as musical guest, musical guest to promote her upcoming album This Is Me Now. In the week leading up to the episode, a 2020 episode of Scam Goddess of the Scam Goddess podcast. Oh, and I love Scam Goddess of the Scam Goddess podcast resurfaced on social media and it featured Eddie Beery speaking critically of Lopez. J-Lo, we know like you're not the main vocalist on your records. Like that is something that we know. We know J-Lo was a scheme that Tommy Mottola set up to come to Mariah Carey with the bullshit. And that's why 30 years later, Mariah Carey still doesn't know who J-Lo is. <laughs> like, you go up to Mariah Carey right now in 2024. Mariah, do you know J-Lo? And she will look at you like, I, I have no idea who that is. Okay, we all know what Tommy Mottola was trying to do with Jennifer Lopez when it came to Mariah Carey. Okay, with his vindictive ass. And that's why Michael Jackson didn't like his ass either. Remember, Michael Jackson had a lot to say about Tommy Mottola um, before he died. Um, But yeah, I knew the tides were changing because when she did this interview, it was like she was just so eager to let the world know that she made this black girl apologize to her for a joke. For a joke that everyone has said. Um, but then shout out to Ayo. You know, she is a, a Emmy winner. And I know she went into her joke. Like, she even told us, like, I think she said Ayo cried when she apologized, baby. Ayo was in there giving Viola Davis the help, snot, and all, okay? That is an Emmy winning actress. She was doing what she had to do. But the fact that J-Lo even publicized that, I always had a problem with that. Because, girl, why the fuck... Were you doing that during Black Women's Black History Month? That's February. It's Black History Month. Everybody white, sit tight. That was everybody white, sit tight month. And before you come to me, J-Lo is a white Hispanic. Okay? So let's not, let's not do that. She is a white Hispanic. There are white Hispanics. There are black Hispanics. She is a white Hispanic. Everybody white, sit tight. 
Everybody white sit tight. Especially during Black Women's Black History Month. Okay? The fact that she made a black girl cry during Black Women's Black History Month and was so eager to share that with the world. That's the ancestors coming for you. Because literally shortly after that, the, the, the entire internet started cooking her ass. Okay? Maybe this has been TikTok when it comes to J-Lo. Maybe they've been cooking her ass all month long. All month. All month. And what was your go-to order at the bodega? My go-to order at the bodega was ham and cheese on a roll with an orange drink, if you know, you know, and a small bag of chips. That is the most plain fucking order. What chips? Like, what drink? Like, what? Nothing else in the sandwich? My mom lived in the Bronx. I'm going to call her right now. I'm going to ask her what her bodega order is. Watch. Hey, Mama, how are you doing? I'm okay, you? Good, I'm doing good. I have a quick question for you. Yes, I probably have an answer. <laughs> um, when you were living in the Bronx, uh, what was your go-to order in the bodega? Um, let me see if I remember. A double, triple, bossy deluxe on a rack. Four by four animal style, hmm, extra shingles with a shimmy and a squeeze, light axle grease, make it cry, burn it, and let it swim. And if you know, you know, my body was. <laughs> wow, that sounds like an amazing sandwich. Like, for the drink, did you get, uh, like an orange drink? What the fuck is an orange drink? I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. A crazy little girl who used to fucking be wild and no limits, all dreams and shit. J-Lo is a delusional chaos demon. At this point, I don't even believe she's from New York anymore because what block are you from, J-Lo? <laughs> Leave us alone, please. I like when I take my hair out like this. Reminds me when I was 16 in the Bronx. Running up and down the block. Fucking crazy little stupid bitch. I used to sell crack cocaine. Fucking shoot guns and be on the block and in the hood. Moving at work. Fucking selling crack cocaine. Hang out with Fat Joe and shit and 50 Cent. Biggie. Fuck used to fucking do raps and stuff. Fucking writing raps for Biggie. Just no limits, like, like zero limits in the Bronx, just full of dreams and dreams and cream. I wasn't Jenny from the block, I was Jenny on the block. I had the block hot, I had the fucking Bronx so hot. Police everywhere and shit. Fucking fuck, fucking fuck, fucking shit. I used to fucking teach little mama how to Harlem shake it. Do the, the chicken noodle soup. Do some rap battle Tupac. Fucking crazy little girl. Fucking Bronx. Take my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx. Running. Like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx. Running up and down the... Okay. <clears throat> I truly have left this woman alone for years. I have just been annoyed in silence since high school. And guess what? I'm a Puerto Rican woman from the Bronx who went to the same high school as you, and you're lying. I saw your high school photo. You did not have hair like that. And we also both attended an all-girls Catholic high school in an Irish and Italian neighborhood. So you weren't running up and down the block. You know damn well you were sitting next to Megan Farley and Christine Marchetti in class. Why are you lying? Please stop using us to look human. We are sick of you. You don't do shit for us. Keep our names out of your mouth. We're not running up and down the block. Not all of us do that for kicks. You're stupid. Stop using us to look human. Stop using us to look relatable. We don't like you. You know, I 
had no idea that the Puerto Ricans felt like that about J-Lo. I had no idea. I always felt she was like the queen of Puerto Rico, the queen of the Bronx. Like just as a black woman looking from the outside in, I thought she was like y'all's girl. I did not know so many people, especially of Hispanic descent, did not like this lady. And I've been seeing this all over social media. I will tell you some of the things that for me growing up, I always found unlikable about JLo for me. It was number one, the fact that it was black women that were always her main vocalist. You know that song, ain't it funny, baby that you want me, now you had me, love's crazy. That was Ashanti's song. Her label went behind her back and gave that song to JLo, okay? And Ashanti, vocalized several hit songs for that lady, okay? So I always felt like, mm, why is it that you're able to climb to into spaces that black women can't climb, but you're doing it off of the strength of black women's voices? Never, never, never like that. I also never liked the fact that I felt like J-Lo was always like black adjacent always like pulling on to blackness, you know, saying the N word in her songs or, you know, doing the whole thing that Mariah Carey did, which was singing with the rappers and, you know, basically like being able to, to capitalize off blackness. But then when you looked at her projects that really, really mattered, like when you looked at her on film, she always played a white woman, like almost always played. Let me, let me, let me stress that again. Almost always played a white woman. And I remember threading that and somebody was saying, well, she's a white Hispanic. She's a white Hispanic. True. But I just feel like outside of Selena and I think it was monster-in-law, she always played like a Caucasian. It just was really, that was always really weird to me. Um, and I feel like other Hispanic actresses don't do that. You know, you don't see, um, what's, what's Sofia Vergara doing that? Like she was always Latina and proud and very vocal about it, very overt with it. And I feel like JLo only did that in times where it benefited her. That's how it always would come off to me. And then I remember years later hearing Tommy Davidson talk about his run-ins with J-Lo. Remember, J-Lo got her start on Living Color with Damon Wayans, like the Wayans family, Jamie Foxx, like Tom, uh, Tommy Davidson. And I remember not so long ago, he did an interview again with Shannon Sharp where he detailed how Jennifer Lopez, who started her career with like off of the back of these black men and were able to reach places that these black men have not reached. Don't get me wrong. The Wayne's family is huge, but they not, they didn't make JLo money. They put JLo on, but they didn't, they never made JLo money. But anyway, he detailed a run in with her. And I thought that this was very, this like very whack. Jay, could you see that Jim and Jamie and JLo and, and John Leguizamo, could you, could you foretell that? They were gonna be that. Yeah, yeah, I could because because I know that anything is possible in that business if you're right. tap. No, right? I'm like, yeah, I know her. So I go, yeah. and she was messing around with scripts. Is that right? Right, right. We used to hang out with with me, her, my ex. We used to go to dinner together, right. you know. And I met her with Keenan at Strictly Business, right? Because he brought her in my trailer while I was doing a movie, and I was like, what is that right 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 and then she showed up to be a fly girl and she worked her ass off right she worked her ass off. she was every day and she was messing around with scripts i was like this girl gonna be something she was so i saw her at the upfronts um it was me and danny devito and he's like that's all there's there's gentlemen up there you know her, right i'm like yeah i know her so i go over there and i'm like what's up girl shoot man you blew up. What, what is going on? She's like, hey. So what's going on? What's going on? Hey, you know, just living up, you know. Get some little carrot dip. No, I'm going, you know, what's in that carrot dip? <laughs> you know, because she's your dip in my ass. You know what I mean? Right. And so, so that happened once. And then um, I was on uh, face break. I had to look around and see if anybody saw that. Right. You know? 
did anybody just see her put a hatchet <laughs> in my forehead? Right. Like, hey, you know? And so um, we had the same manager at the same time. So I just avoided her because you never know what someone's going through that right, day. Right, right, right. I could be misreading Right, it. right. You know, I always got to get the love. But, right. that, but that's from my profile. Right. From being the black and between the white right. and all that. So I'm needy in that right. way. I can admit that. Right. But I do love love. Right. Well, she might be, listen. You, you know? can only judge a person by the experience that you have with that person. Right. She might be she might be a great person to to CJ right. and right. Hollywood right. and all about my guy Jordan. Right. But your experience in that moment was right. not love, was not great. Right. And so I gave it some time and stuff, and I, I never blamed the person. Right. You know, I just try to try to work with myself. Right. You know what I mean? I can change you. You're right. You know, right. I had to work on that. And so she, we had the same uh, manager at one time. Right. And she was doing a video up in up in um in the block. Yeah. Jenny Jenny Jenny, Jenny from the block. Block, 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 block. Right. right. That one. And so <laughs> Don't um, be fooled by the rocks that I got. He said, Why don't you go and visit her on the set, man? She would love to see you. And I was like, nah, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right, man. Right. He's like, nah, man, come on, man. This is you. Come on, man. I was like, nah, that's all right, man. Right. That's all right, because one time is enough right. for me. Right. You know, I don't gotta steal another base. If, if it's rock, one and out, hey, I'll get, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait till the next up, right? right? So I go down on the platform, and there she is, you know? Uh, and I'll tell you the only thing that saved me. Um, I walked down the platform, and she was looking at the, at the, at the screen mm -hmm. with all the rest of the dancers, right. you know? And um, Benny's all proud. He's standing with me, you know? Ben Medina, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, he put the last name on that. Okay. All right. Um, I'm so <laughs> Him, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. Get to the uh, point, Tommy. Damn. So I get down to the, to the end of the thing and I look at her and Benny's going, damn, come on, man. Let me hear, man. I'm like, all right, man. And I go, Jennifer, what's up? And she goes, hey. So that was like the last, you know, I don't know how she's going to be when I see her next. But the next time I saw her, I avoided her. Right. Because I don't like feeling that way. Right. I don't want to be around anybody yeah. that makes me feel like not I'm, I'm not I'm important. less than because. I thought that was so fucked up. Like, Tommy Davidson is a legend. And Tommy Davidson played a huge part on Living Color. She knew exactly who he was. And I'm glad that he gave her grace. Like, you know, maybe she was having a bad day. But it's like, no, he saw her again and it was the same thing again. And they had the same manager. Like, so it's like, you know, how do you treat somebody like that knowing that you are where you are because of these black men who put you on? And then when you got into the industry, it was black men who continued to put you on. The P. Diddy's, the Ja Rules, the Murder Inks. Yes, don't get me wrong, Tommy Matola was behind it all, but Tommy Matola was very instru instrumental in making sure that she was able to profit off of blackness all the time, all throughout her, you know, all throughout her career. And that's just something that I've always thought was really, really weird. Um, do y'all remember when J-Lo had dropped this challenge in <laughs> 2021? I think it was like the top of 2021. Let me see the date. January 23, 2021. Uh, I can't play the sound, but it's, think you want to spend my shit? You don't think I want to lay it over? I don't. Even if you were broke, my love don't pass a thing. Who was the girl singing that song? That's another girl singing that chorus. We never knew who that was. The way nobody did this damn love don't cost a thing challenge, like nobody did, baby. Even to this day, I'm reading the comments and it says, child, this and said, girl, ain't nobody doing this. Nice try. The way no one did this. <laughs> so it's been 20 years since you stole Mariah Carey's song. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> the way everybody paid this shit dust. Um, but yeah, I. While I agree with most of the criticism with J-Lo, I do feel like, well, damn, it does feel like it's all of a sudden. Maybe because I'm not, you know, Hispanic. I'm not part of the Hispanic community. I can't speak for the, for the, for the Hispanics, but I always thought that, like, she was y'all's, like, Selena number two. And we all know, like, she, she wanted to be Selena. She wanted Selena's career. And, I mean, she was able to get Selena's career times 10. 
you know? But anyway, let me know your thoughts on the internet cooking J-Lo. Speaking of Selena, though, have y'all seen the little docu-series on oxygen with the lady who killed Selena? Child, Yolanda Saldivar is down to the oxygen network talking about why she killed Selena. It's a two-part docu-series. And I told myself I wasn't going to watch it. But I sat down and watched it, you know, recently, um, it was the 29th anniversary of Yolanda, you know, deleting Selena. Um, she down to the documentary for two, a two part series, right? And I want Oxygen to refund me the damn two hours because it was a total waste of my goddamn time because Yolanda Salivar is on the Oxygen Network talking about, well, Selena was having an affair with a BBL doctor, and she talking about all this shit that ain't got nothing to do with why she killed Selena. Selena used to make me go down there to go visit the BBL doctor behind her husband's back, and her daddy knew about it, and he had popped my tire. I, I can't prove that he popped my tire, but I think he popped my tire. And there was one time when I was down to a restaurant, and these men came up to me and told me that they was going to delete me. And I think it was her daddy that sent those men, but I don't have a proof. So I got myself a gun, and I just wanted to show Selena the pew, pew, pew. And when I went to show Selena the pew, 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 she was telling me about the Dr. Miami dude, and she wanted me to go back with her to go visit the BBL doctor. And and then the pew, pew, pew went off. Girl, you had 30 years to come up with something. Yolanda, you had 30 years to come up with something. That's the best you could do? Talking about a BBL doctor who had an affair with Selena? The same Selena whose parents wouldn't let her even kiss the little guitar player who was in the band? You expect me to believe that? Mind you, the BBL doctor has come out several times and said no. Oh, no, no. Yo, yo, estoy, yo no estoy aquí. Yo no estoy aquí. Yo no comprende. No, yo no estoy aquí. Okay? He said yo no estoy aquí several times, girl. You done had 30 years to come up with something and this the best you could do? Mind you, apparently she coming up for parole next year. The state of Texas better do what needs to be done. Keep her ass in jail, cause we will jump her. Like, girl, the way we finna jump you, the way we finna jump you, especially after this documentary series, girl. Y'all do know that black women go up for Selena, right? Like, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's a couple Hispanics that black women go up for. Selena is one of them, okay? Uh, Celia Cruz. Is one of them. Uh, get on your feet. What's that lady's name? Gloria Estevan. Okay, it's a couple black, it's a couple Hispanics. It's a couple Hispanic women that black women go up for. Okay, and Selena is up there. Gloria Estevan, Celia Cruz. Okay, all them little women who was on Telemundo back in the day. Them is our bitches. All right. And so you had 30 years to come up with something and this the best you could do that Selena was having a secret affair with a BBL doctor and that's why you pew pew pewed her? Girl, if you don't get serious. <sighs> oxygen, oxygen, y'all should be, the oxygen network should be ashamed of themselves. Wasting my damn time. I thought I was going to learn something new. Wasting my damn time. Okay, let's talk about Lizzo, all right? So just a couple days ago, Lizzo had made this post um, that kind of went viral. Well, it did go viral on her Instagram. She wrote, I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a bit better uh, than I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies, being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of every joke every single time because of how I look. My character is being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this. I quit. Um, I remember seeing that video and thinking, wow, this is a little... I remember seeing the post and thinking, wow, this is a little alarming because... Especially the part where she said, I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. You know, that sounds like somebody who's considering like self-deletion. And so I was like, damn, like that's a bit concerning. 
Um, and then you have people like Azalea Banks who responded. I took back my criticism of you because it definitely clicked in my mind that I definitely wasn't getting my point about the ways in which insidious people in corporate culture uh, were positioning you to push the meaning initiatives. But sis, your handle is Lizzo B. Eaton. <laughs> You've definitely given the public license to laugh at and with you by twerking at the Burger King counter and bathing suit uh, and wearing a bathing suit in a tub of Skittles. Self-deprecation was certainly uh, the aesthetic you chose to introduce yourself with. So I don't see why you'd play victim rather than just stop intentionally inviting people to make jokes about that. You're a beautiful girl with a handle on music theory, Grammy awards and tons of success. Just change the narrative and go highbrow uh, Philharmonic on these holes and collab with Ryuchi Sakamoto. Okay, I don't know who that is, but it's like, even though it's a little backhanded, I mean, Azalea had a point. Lizzo be eating. And Lizzo has played a part into kind of like, I don't want to say self fat shaming, but you know, like putting her, 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 you know, big buns on display. Do y'all remember that one time when she was at that basketball game with no pants on? Like, you know, like just stuff like that. Like you have fed into that as well. Not saying it's okay for people to fat shame her because it's not, but she has definitely fed into the narrative when it fits her. Now, I was thinking also, I thought this was a little, a little interesting considering the fact that recently Lizzo did kind of take a L when it comes to her legal woes. Now, do y'all remember the lawsuit um, that uh, Lizzo's ex-dancers filed against her? You know, the whole, the booty banana sandwich allegations down to the red light district. Like, it was really wild. And mind you, these girls didn't just have booty banana sandwiches allegations, you know, where they was allegating that Lizzo was forcing them to stick bananas uh, up their booties. Um, allegedly, but um, they also detailed like times when they felt imprisoned, uh, bullying at work. Some of them actually detailed racism. Again, this is all allegedly. 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 This is all alleged. Back in December, she had requested that the judge seal all the documents um, pertaining to her lawsuit, seal the lawsuit as well. She did that in December. In February, she was denied that. The judge denies Lizzo's motion to have sexual harassment lawsuit dismissed. A Los Angeles judge ruled that the case filed by the singer's former dancers will proceed to trial. A judge denied Lizzo's attempt to have her sexual harassment lawsuit dismissed. Billboard reports a Los Angeles County Superior Court judge ruled on Friday that the case will proceed to trial. Three of Lizzo's former dancers filed the lawsuit last year, accusing the good as hell, good as hell, singer of sexual harassment. Back in August, Lizzo filed an anti-slap motion arguing that her backup dancers' claims arise from statements and other conduct uh, in furtherance of the exercise of constitutional right of free speech in connection with a public issue or an issue of public interest. The artist's lawyers also argued the accusers were uh, using the lawsuit to silence Lizzo. Um, I can't believe they use an anti-slap. Who are her lawyers? Who are her lawyers? Like... The anti-slap angle is what I used in my lawsuit with Karen, Karen Civil. Um, I think that's typically used, and the lawyers, if you're viewing this, you know, hit up the comments, but that's typically used for if you're just defaming someone. These dancers were accusing you of harassing them on the job. Why are we using the anti-slap motion? Yeah, you need new lawyers. Hey, you need new lawyers. You need new lawyers. This is not it. So I do feel like that contributed to her, you know, feeling some type of way. And, you know, the fact that all this stuff is going to be made public. But here's the thing. Lizzo, if you drop some fire records, nobody's going to care. You know what? Let me not say that because I do feel like the hate that happens for women is 10 times worse. Like we're seeing what ha what's happening with Diddy, but so many people are starting to come forward to defend their fellow brother. You don't see that with Lizzo. Whenever a black woman falls, nobody's really defending her. 
nobody's really defending her. So um, now she did post this on her Instagram. I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not gonna quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep being me. Once again, I just want to say thank you the love that I've received whew, means more than you know. I'm happy that this is her reaction. Um, apparently, um, she also is tagging, you know, her Yiddy. So, you know, in that video, we saw her in her Yiddy bathing suit. The next video is another uh, Yiddy bathing suit and she tagged it. So, you know, it just looks like that post was a scheme that Ta set up to promote Yiddy. That's really what it's giving. Because you literally, I ain't gonna argue. I just feel like, you know what? I feel like, sis, you should just came out in your bathing suit and just, and, and, and just, and just, and just promoted your, your business, okay? Just promote your business, okay? That's clearly what this was all about. Just promote your business, okay? We, 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 we are many things. We are not stupid, all right? Let's move on. Let's go ahead and move on, y'all. Um, Gerard Carmichael is on HBO Max sucking on pink toes. Gerard Carmichael is on HBO sucking pink feet. Hey. Yeah, went back on one. Hey, Why did I have to see this? Is this what the ancestors died for? Is this what we become? Mind you, he's doing this during Black Ramadan month. First of all, we're not supposed to be eating no pork. This is a time of reverence. Yeah. Gerard is <laughs> on Grinder, okay? Gerard is on Grinder looking for the mans with the pink toes, okay? This is his Grinder search, all right? This is his Grinder search. Men with pink toes. Gerard is on Grinder looking for the men's with pink feet. Okay? He is looking for pink toes on Grinder. Okay? Just keep this in mind. And one by one, one by one, they just co start coming in. They start coming in. Thanks for coming by. How old are you? I'm 20. Okay. Okay, he found himself a 20, a 20 year old. How old are you? I don't think I ever got your last name. I just got your first name. That's been five. You're all five decades. So you're 15? Okay. <laughs> Gerard tells this 20 year old man, okay, that he might want to ask him to the Emmys, but he would be a backup because he wants to ask the man that he really is in love with to go with him to the Emmys. Then fast forward 10 seconds later. Yeah. Y'all. Gerard Carmichael is on HBO sucking pink feet. Mind you, he's doing this during Black Ramadan month. I just want to make sure that y'all understand he is doing this during Black Women's Black Ramadan month. First of all, we're not supposed to be eating no pork, okay? This is a time of reverence. And here you have Gerard Carmichael sucking pink feet, okay? And what kills me about all this is apparently even though he is down to the grinder looking for pink penis and pink feet, the love of his life is a black man, okay?
The love of his life is <laughs> like we're not going to hey, we're not going to hey, hey, we're not going to hey, suck it up. Let's continue. So apparently he is friends with Tyler, the creator. They've been friends for years and he kind of shot his shot at Tyler and Tyler ignored him. So Gerard Carmichael thought, why not bring him into my hotel room while I'm filming my docu-series with HBO so that I can have a heartfelt conversation with this man to let him know I'm still in love with him. Okay, that's where we at. And my thing is, from the time I saw Tyler's expression, I already knew what time he was on. <laughs> I already knew what time he was on. The reason I wanted to talk to you on camera is that I kind of felt like a distance between us. I have an idea of what it is, but what I think, what think that is made it's because I told you I feel this for you and we didn't talk about it ever. That was like weird. I don't know if it was just too awkward to talk about or too... I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's just <laughs> like, I feel like you left me hanging out there a little bit. Like, like when you said that, I think I replied with like something super mad, normal, regular. Like, you laughed and called me stupid, bitch. <laughs> Gerard told Tyler that he has feelings for him. And Tyler's response was, you stupid bitch. You laughed at and called me stupid bitch. Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. And I think I just, like, brushed it off. What would possess Gerard Carmichael to put this man on camera after he called you a stupid bitch the first time you told him you, you had feelings for him? What would possess you to say, you know what, let me put him, let me put his ass on camera for the world to see? What would possess you to do that? Oh, I know. That's yeah. Getting news like that and then avoiding it is a way to avoid change so you were avoiding i never said that i wasn't that was a lot to download and now we're here and i still don't know how to respond yeah 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 so tyler is still like i Bro, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know what you want me to tell you, bro. Tyler orders himself some chicken wings. <laughs> Tyler is a menace. Tyler said, let me go ahead and give you some chicken wings. When you told me that, I'm like, no, I don't. Not like that. Like, that's, that's like a brother. Ooh. That means like family. Ooh. Like true, like family. Ah. Like a true brother. Baby, I see you as a brother. I see you as family. I don't know why you're having this conversation with me on camera. I already done told you, you a stupid bitch, and now you put me on camera so I can tell you the same thing again. What do we have? What is this conversation? That's basically where, where Tyler is at. What, what, what? Mind you, as Gerard is in distress, head in his knees, this is Tyler. <laughs> This is Tyler cracking up while Gerard is in distress, okay? Like, his head is in his knees. This is Tyler. Like, crying, laughing. No fucks given. Oh, that's right. You ordered food. I'm going to the Period. He ordered himself some chicken. He's like, listen, I'm done with this concert. Where the chicken at? Where's my chicken wings that I ordered? Baby, he fucking that chicken up. Up. <laughs> uh. Am I gonna finish that? Oh, I wasn't implying I wanted it. I know I don't want any of that. No. I'm a big straight. Big straight on that. 
Big straight. Big straight on that. Just letting you know. I'm big straight. What are you seeking? In life or on this plate? Bruh. What are you seeking? In life or on this plate? <laughs> I am dead. I am dead. This is hurtful to what? This is hurting me. This is hurting me. Not in life or on this plane. <laughs> Whoosh. Ah, there goes it. This is going to be a fart in like 30 seconds. I'm like, oh. I just don't want to kill us. Are you really doing that to me, Ryan? Sorry, dog. You straight. You good. It was a baby one anyway. He did. He'll live. Baby, Tyler ate his chicken wings, he farted, and he left. Period. I have never had such secondhand embarrassment while watching a television show in my life. In my life. Mind you, HBO canceled rap shit. But we got Gerard Carmichael sucking pink toes down to the HBO Max. <laughs> okay? Very entertaining though. I will be tuned in. I will be catching all of the season point blank period. Um, what do y'all think about this? This is this is just, I don't know. But also, have you guys ever experienced something like this? Like, have you guys ever shared with a friend um, your, your feelings for them and got rejected like this? I did. I, uh, this was back in like 20, 2019. A friend of mine, I was having an event and unbeknownst to me, he showed up with flowers and he was ready to ask me to be in a relationship with him. But then when he got to the event, I was on the panel talking about how I really wanted to get back with my ex. Mind you, I'm joking, like I'm joking, but he heard it and he just made the decision to not ask me. And then he got into another relationship shortly thereafter. Um, when he got in a relationship, by the time we got into a relationship, like I realized, like I did have feelings for him and he had told me his intentions for the event. And I was like, Oh no, like, I was just joking, but he had already moved on and it just was too late. So it wasn't like this, but you know, I have had something similar happen to me and you know, it did kind of, it hurt, it hurt. Let me know if you've ever experienced anything like this. All right, y'all. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Drop that in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. All these diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, woo!